हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज सोलर एनर्जी एंड इट्स प्रोस्पेक्ट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सोलर एनर्जी एंड इट्स जनरेशन इंडियाज पोटेंशियल इन सोलर एनर्जी करंट स्टेटस ऑफ सोलर एनर्जी इन इंडिया बेनिफिट्स ऑफ सोलर एनर्जी चैलेंजेस इन सोलर एनर्जी जनरेशन इंडियाज इंपॉर्टेंट मिशन एंड वे फॉरवर्ड First of all let's discuss about solar energy and its generation. The sun is an extremely powerful energy source and sunlight is by far the largest source of energy received by the earth. Its intensity at earth's surface is actually quite low. Solar energy radiation from the sun is capable of producing heat, causing chemical reactions or generating electricity. The total amount of solar energy incident on earth is in excess of the world's current and anticipated energy requirements if suitably harnessed this highly diffused source has the potential to satisfy all future energy needs light is composed of photons which can be observed by a photovoltaic cell the type of cell that composes solar panels solar radiation may be converted directly into electricity by these cells in such cells a small electric voltage is generated through photovoltaic effect These solar cells are composed of two different types of semiconductors a p type and an n type that are joined together to create a pn junction by connecting large numbers of individual cells together hundreds or even thousands of kilowatts of electric power can be generated now moving on to india's potential in solar energy india is endowed with vast solar energy potential About 5000 trillion kWh per year energy is incident over India's land area with most parts receiving 4 to 7 kWh per square meter per day. Solar photovoltaic power can effectively be harnessed providing huge scalability in India. National Institute of Solar Energy has assessed the country's solar potential of about 748 gigawatt assuming 3% of the waste land area to be covered by solar pv modules now let's discuss about current status of solar energy in india in 2014 the government had set an ambitious target of 175 gigawatt of installed capacity of renewable energy the target for solar energy was set to be 100 gigawatt by 2022 At COP26 in Glasgow 2021 India updated its nationally determined contributions or NDCs India set a target of 500 gigawatt of non fossil electricity capacity and half of energy from renewable sources out of this around 300 gigawatt is expected to be contributed by solar energy a total of 14.21 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity was added during the period January to October 2022 Currently India stands fourth in solar PV deployment across the globe as on end of 2021 solar power installed capacity has reached around 61.97 gigawatt as on 30th November 2022 presently solar tariff in India is very competitive and has achieved grid parity now let's have a look at the benefits of solar energy Solar energy provides the ability to generate power on a distributed basis. It enables rapid capacity addition with short lead times. Off-grid decentralized and low temperature applications will be advantageous from a rural applications perspective. From an energy security perspective, solar is the most secure of all sources since it is abundantly available. Theoretically a small fraction of the total incident solar energy can meet the entire country's power requirements solar energy based decentralized and distributed applications have benefited millions of people in indian villages the social and economic benefits include reduction in collection of fuel woods by women cooking in smoking kitchens minimization of the risk of contracting lung and eye ailments employment generation at village level the improvement in the standard of living now moving on to challenges in solar energy generation the energy efficiency of most present day photovoltaic cells is only about 15 to 20% since the intensity of solar radiation is low to begin with large and costly assemblies of such cells are required to produce even moderate amounts of power 
the utility scale solar pv sector continues to face challenges like land cost high transmission and distribution losses and other inefficiencies grid integration challenges there have also been conflicts with local communities and biodiversity protection norms there is limited financing for residential consumers and small and medium enterprises who want to install rooftop solar in 2021-22 india imported nearly 76.62 billion dollars worth solar cells and modules from china alone accounting for 78.6% of india's total imports that year low manufacturing capacities coupled with cheaper imports from china have rendered indian products uncompetitive now let's discuss about india's important missions first is international solar alliance the isa was conceived as a joint effort by india and france to mobilize efforts against climate change through deployment of solar energy solutions it was conceptualized on the sidelines of the 21st conference of parties to the unf triple c held in paris in 2015 with the amendment in 2020 all member states of the united nations are now eligible to join the isa at present 110 countries are signatories to the isa framework agreement of which 90 countries have ratified the isa is guided by its towards 1000 strategy it aims to mobilize 1000 billion us dollars of investments in solar energy solutions by 2030 also delivering energy access to 1000 million people using clean energy solutions and resulting in installation of 1000 gigawatt of solar energy capacity national solar energy mission solar energy has taken a central place in india's national action plan on climate change with national solar mission as one of the key missions national solar mission was launched on 11th january 2010 The mission's objective is to establish India as a global leader in solar energy by creating the policy conditions for solar technology diffusion across the country as quickly as possible. The mission targeted installing 100 gigawatt grid connected solar power plants by the year 2022. This is in line with India's INDC's target to achieve about 40% cumulative electric power installed capacity from non-fossil fuel. It aims to reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent from 2005 level by 2030. Now, lastly, let's discuss about the way forward. While India has achieved record low tariffs for solar power generation in the utility scale segment, this has not translated into cheaper power for end consumers. Solar energy sector in India has emerged as a significant player in the grid connected power generation capacity over the years. It supports the government agenda of sustainable growth while emerging as an integral part of the solution to meet the nation's energy needs. With schemes like solar park scheme, PM Kusum, solar rooftops etc, India is heading in the right direction. By improving the manufacturing capacities R&D in solar cells modules and reducing import dependence india can become the world leader in solar energy now moving on to practice questions first of all prelims question with reference to solar power production in india consider the following statements one india is the third largest in the world in the manufacture of silicon wafers used in photovoltaic units two the solar power tariffs are determined by the solar energy corporation of india Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. And now mains question: To what factors can the recent dramatic fall in equipment cost and tariff of solar energy be attributed? What implications does the trend have for the thermal power producers and the related industry? So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.